What's up, JS350, JP in the house. Anyway, I just got finished watching this um, documentary and some films from Mr. V's World. He's a brother over in Thailand, and uh, his videos are good. You know, for you, um, for a lot of you guys that are uh, watching my videos and things like that and believe in the confidence things, you know, you should really check out his videos. You know, I watched a couple of them, I think three, and they were good. Um, he interviews women also in his videos and talk and one guy and he talks about uh, you know building confidence and things like that now um, I'm against this confidence thing because I think it's just BS and it's just another tool that media or whoever you know using just to um, screw men you know and but you know it's like my views on different things you know um, what he's doing, it, when he, especially when he talk about confidence, it's good though because you do need Santa Claus type um, stories and things like that, and you know Popeye and underdogs type stories. You know when you're young, you know as a young kid and stuff, you need those um, those stories and things. Well, I guess quote unquote you need them, or they felt you need them anyway to um, how can I say mm, boost your confidence or or train you basically into I think it's just training into a certain mold and certain lifestyle and things like that and what I mean by lifestyle is you know you can make money nowadays even back when I was um, in a, uh, back in my days you know a lot of black people uh, were poor and stuff like that but um, you know then you have people in the neighborhood that did have money and I think the only thing was I don't know maybe it was you know I guess because I had just left Venice when the drugs had actually went uh, crack cocaine the head started coming in and stuff like that I went to the military and stuff you know I'm so I missed all, all, and all that stuff but you know I wasn't um I wouldn't have gotten into it anyway and you know I'm just saying what I would have did I know I wouldn't have done it that's for sure because I always said no to drugs but um still other things would have probably happened anyway you know but um all I can say is you know those um uh, what he's doing is good because you do need confidence I guess if you know, as a story builder and stuff like that, like you need your fairy tales and things like that, and that's what I believe they are. And it's nothing wrong with the fairy tales, you know, but I think, you know, there comes a time when these fairy tales and things like that needs to be, you know, thrown in the trash can, and you know, you need to really understand real life. Um, but um, his videos are good and they are inspiration. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, when I um, um, watched them and stuff like that, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. You know, and because it is true, you know, you do need confidence and stuff like that um, to get girls and things like that if you believe that's what's actually getting you the girls. I don't believe that's what it is, okay? But if you do believe it, then that's fine, you know, because I'm against all this uh, emotional stuff like that. But I'm not saying it doesn't work, that I'm just totally oblivious of it and it doesn't affect me, it does affect me. Right now, I'm just in this, the, um, the uh, what is it called, the um, cleansing stage to try to get rid of that stuff. Because my life, when I um, grew up, I didn't, like I said, you know, I didn't have started having sex till like, I think it was like maybe January. No, it was December of, I don't know what, I think it was like, because I wrote it down to December the 20th or something, like right before Christmas or in December or something like that. And um, it was like a few months, four months before my birthday and stuff. So... Um, for me, you know, maybe I'm not a good, uh, person to talk about, um, confidence and stuff if it's going to be, um, uh, with the guys between the ages, um, the guys before 21 because I, um, I, um, just didn't mess with it, you know, and, um, all that confidence and stuff, like I was shy, you know, I will say that, you know. But it was more or less like, I wasn't shy because I was shy. Because when I was in high school, and junior high school, especially when I moved to um, California, you know, the girls came to me, mostly white girls and stuff, you know, they all came to me. When I was in Detroit, too, you know, the sisters came to me. I didn't have to go to a woman and try to do anything. Now, what I'm saying is, like, before, um, between the age, when I, before I was nine, I was engaged in uh, sexual activities and stuff. And it was with women that were older than me. And or well, at least a year older. I think the oldest one was nine years older than me and stuff, you know. And uh, 
And so that was between the ages of, you know, before I was nine. Once I got hit by a car, when I, um, right before I turned nine or something like that, I just stopped everything. It just really changed my whole life and stuff. But, <clears throat> but after I, um, but before I did have, um, start engaging in sexual activities and things like that, I was in Venice and I went to the beach. I told this story a lot of times. I was just walking to the beach one day and I said, I want to get rid of this shyness. Now I'm going to tell you, I, you know, I call it shyness and stuff like that. And the only reason I call it shyness isn't necessarily because I was shy. It was just that I felt like I was an outcast in the neighborhood and not so much because I was a bad person or anything, but, um, maybe because I was just doing things different than other people or, the things I was doing, I didn't know anyone that was doing the same. Like I was taking, uh, and like like I like I'm just gonna say something stupid. Well, of course I'm gonna say something stupid. Okay, I'm gonna continue because I was, it was I just put my foot in my mouth. But I say you know I was taking um, pre calculus when I was in the eighth grade or something like that, and that was in um, um, that was in the uh, what was it called in the um, that was when I was in Inglewood. You know, and I was going, I'm going to say that, well, I was, uh, yeah, I'm going to say, and I didn't know anyone in my neighborhood who was taking those same classes, but that's kind of stupid because the whole neighborhood is Inglewood and it's a big, Inglewood, and I wasn't the only student in the class, you know, so that was kind of stupid, I was, but you know, I'm, I'm just saying that, so I'm letting you know that I do slip up and stuff, but, um, I didn't hang out with any of those students, you know, because I just went to school and stuff and came home and all I was thinking about was you know how can I get back to Westwood you know because I wasn't feeling it over in um, Inglewood or um, anything like that and it wasn't because I didn't want to be with black people or anything but it was just that there were so many other places to go I mean when you're in Inglewood you know then I had to catch a bus and you know walk through the neighborhoods and you know there was a lot of stuff going on but when I was living in, Wing in Westwood on Landfair, off of Gailey, and so between Gailey and Strathmore, you know, we had UCLA to go to Westwood, we had the beaches to go to Santa Monica, you know, we had Beverly Hills, Bel Air was always up there, you know, you can always go to the um, park over at the um, Veterans Building, I had my friends living in different areas in Westwood and stuff, um, walked to the pavilion, just went everywhere, so it, was, it wasn't more, it wasn't nothing like I was, how can I say, uh, didn't like a black neighborhood, but it was just limited because of my limited resources to travel, you know, for me to travel. And and living in the Westwood and stuff, you know, we walk or we rode our bike and stuff like that, you know. But, um, but when I was 19, I went to the beach and said, you know, I want to break my shyness. And I didn't say it was confidence or nothing like that. I knew what it was. It was just my shyness. and Or I was just straight up scared to talk to women or quote unquote thought I was. Anyway. And like I said, I was just basing all of this stuff on what um, what my friends were doing and, and the things that I heard because I didn't really have any problems with women, you know, coming to me. And I wasn't, um, and then when we went out to, um, how was it, to um, like the Fox Hills malls and stuff like that with my, one of my homies and stuff, you know, my homies and stuff. You know, they're going to Santa Monica, we're going to Fox Hill Malls and stuff. And we would see women, we would step to them and talk, you know. And um, my friends, they were more or less, I don't know if they were engaged in those act um, sexual activities or anything like that. But, because I never, we, actually I never asked those things, you know, because I wasn't doing it. So, of course, I didn't have any curiosity, so I wouldn't ask. But, you know, we'll go to places, we'll go back to the girls and stuff like that. So... Then, for some, I don't know why, or maybe, I'm not sure which happened first. No, no, it had, yeah, they happened. So we went to those places. I was always in Santa Monica, you know, I was always at Venice Beach, you know, going to different places and doing different things. And, you know, I was talking to women. So why I just developed this thing in my head where I was shy to talk to women. Um, actually, I do know what it was. It was... I could walk up to any woman, I don't care if she's tall, short, whatever, and just walk up and have a conversation, and that's fine. But when it comes to actually trying to uh, have any type of physical relationship with them and stuff like that, then I just, the words just wasn't there, and I didn't, actually, I just didn't know how to um, 
engage in the conversation to the point where, hey, you know, I want to do this with you and I want to do that with you, you know, because I didn't, I never had to do that, you know. So because I didn't have to do that since I wasn't engaged in it, you know, I just trying to be like my friends, you know, or assimilate my friends or, you know, be would do whatever they're doing and stuff like that. So, um, so that's what I tried to do and stuff, but it was more or less like, how can I say, uh, yeah, it was just did that part of life. I just never knew. So I was just, I guess you can say I was um, posing as I was a, 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 a guy who had trouble talking to women. And it wasn't that I had trouble talking to women because I didn't have to go talk to them because they always came and talked to me and spoke to me. So anyway, I just went and talked to them. And it was like that's like I said, you know, um, one day I talked to 40 women. And it wasn't a one-on-one. -on -one. It was always two. The most was seven. And it was it was easy. You know, it was real simple. I'm like, wow, this is easy. But the whole thing is when I said, wow, this is easy, you know, the reason it was easy is because it was just, you know, I just engaged in the conversations that the women, when they came to me, engaged in. So I would just basically just use, you know, the stuff that they did, you know, walk, hey, how you doing, but whatever, you know, and talking and stuff, you know, and it was, it was really interesting, you know, but, um, and then later in my life, you know, this confidence thing, it was never a confidence thing. It was more or less like I would hear these these comments and stuff that other guys made well you know if you do this you gotta have confidence in it and I'm like okay what's wrong with me because I don't have this confidence I never looked towards confidence I never thought I was weak or I couldn't do anything I just never I just had didn't have that in me and it was and I'm not going to say I got that from the white neighborhoods or you know in the black neighborhoods you know people got there and it was just it was just something that maybe I just maybe I heard about it or whatever but it just didn't affect me. It just didn't affect me like that. Maybe, um, maybe it was what my mom did, or or maybe it was something I said like, um, and what I mean by what my mom did was maybe it was the way my mom brought me up. I don't know if it's true or not, you know, because I'm very different than my than all three of um, my family members and stuff. But I think one thing what it was was I kind of noticed how people's lives were, and I said, okay, fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do everything opposite of what my mom did and see if that'll work you know and so that's what I did you know but I'm not going to say I did everything opposite but it was just like and I'm not saying that my mom did anything bad because I had a great mom you know but it was just you know just some of the decisions and things like that and you know she didn't make any bad decisions or anything like that I mean look how we turned out and stuff so I well, look how I turned out you know and so anyway, I just said that, I, why I said that, I don't know, but maybe it was just um, another way of saying I'm going to be more responsible, and um, and not saying that my mother was irresponsible or anything, but maybe what I was really saying to myself is I'm going to be responsible and like that in my life, and so, and, and I'll tell you the truth, you know, my life isn't, it's not, it's, you know, I've had my trials and error, but it was more or less like um, when I spoke to, when older, my parents, not my parents, but my mom's, I mean, even my mom too, but when my friend's parents wanted, when I went to their house, they always gave me these lectures and stuff, you know, as a kid, we call them lectures, you know, lectures and stuff. And some of them, you know, they criticized me, you know, not knowing anything about me. Some of them, you know, but it didn't matter what they said, you know, I just listened to them because, um, within those, com within those criticism, there are criticisms there are good advice so you know they say well do this and that and that da, 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 da. And I'm like okay fine I'll do this and I'll do that you know that's probably the only reason why I even stayed with my wife you know because uh, we should have got divorced two weeks after we got married but it was this old white man I think in his 60s and he just told me straight up he's he told me something and I said like, oh, okay fine and you know and I not did that you know I wouldn't be here my I got four beautiful children all of my children are beautiful and i'm not even bragging you look at them and you see my children you're like oh they're not even your kids and a lot of people you know they're like really shocked and stuff you know and um and it could be from the looks of my wife i mean you know their mom maybe you know i'm not saying nothing all i'm saying is i had part in it you know what i'm saying and she can have all the credit i don't care you know but um 
All I'm, oh, I can't last what I was thinking about when I've tracked. 